One region is all about bringing us together, coming up with common goals, and then finding action initiatives to make things happen. In all of that, you are all leaders, that you all have an opportunity to participate in that. It takes leadership. And I can't think of any, anyone else from Northwest Indiana who typifies leadership more than Pete Visklosky. 29 years, he's labored on our behalf. He's brought the bacon home, and he's served us well, and he's with us here today. Pete. Bill, thank you very much, and uh, would want to begin, first of all, by thanking uh, Dennis Rittenmeyer uh, for all of his good work, not only with one region, but that wealth you see on the side of his head is from all the concrete walls he slammed it into, <laughs> talking about regional bus and regional transit and regional rail and we wouldn't be this close if it wasn't for this gentleman, and I thank him for that very much. I do also uh, want to uh, thank uh, Chris White, uh, who is new to our region, uh, but I think has uh, picked up uh, very quickly uh, the needs of what we need to do uh, to create jobs and a future for children in Northwest Indiana, and for Bill Nangle for his lifetime of service to all of us. Uh, I particularly uh, want to thank our keynote speaker, Mayor Daley. Uh, all of you know my father was mayor of Gary. Uh, being a mayor, and we have many of them here today, is probably the toughest job on the planet Earth. Uh, and I, for one, appreciate his lifetime of service. For many, uh, his service would be completed, except he has devoted his life to improving the world and in conjunction with the University of Chicago is committed to helping our region with his particular and special partnership with the mayor and city of Gary. Uh, and Mayor Daly, I profoundly thank you uh, for that. I also do want to thank uh, all of our state legislators who are here, Democrat and Republican, House and Senate, and those who came before, particularly in 2005. Because for all of the problems we've had in Northwest Indiana, every member of the Northwest Indiana delegation of both parties and both houses came together because they saw the future and voted unanimously to create the Regional Development Authority. They had foresight. And in that vein, I would thank John Clark, the first chairman of the RDA. I want to thank Lee Morris for his good work. And I want to thank Don Fesco for the work he is yet to do, as well as the executive directors, uh, Tim Sanders uh, and Bill Hanna and all of the board members. They epitomize what one region is all about. And if you remember, they were charged with four express responsibilities, the development and enhancement of the Gary Chicago Airport, and as we eat lunch today, people are working at that airport. They were charged with beginning to bring economic vitality to the five lakeshore committees under the auspices of the Marquette Plan. You have no further to go than the Lake Michigan shoreline to see their success in leveraging about $200 million of, yes, our tax money, our tax money, to leverage another $1.1 billion of federal and private investment that has already created more than 2,000 jobs. Some have suggested next year that, well, we ought to probably just do away with the RDA after 10 years. That would be a catastrophic, catastrophic decision. And I'm looking at the program today and it says, 
one region, one region, not 20. The only debate, from my humble opinion, we ought to be having about the RDA next year is how much more money the state ought to pony up so we can get the job done in Northwest Indiana. That's what we ought to be talking about. And work still needs to be done. We do need to proceed with the recapitalization and expansion of the South Shore Line because from that recapitalization and expansion flows the creation of a regional fixed and on-demand bus service. Why? If any of you have not read the feature article in National Journal from August 31st, and it in many ways highlights the work of Mayor Daley, you should. It talks about city-states, regions in the United States. And let us not forget that through the work of this good gentleman and his father, and mayors like Harold Washington, Chicago's economy is larger than Sweden's and we're ignoring it. A job in Chicago pays 38% more than a job in Lake County and we're ignoring it. They have 410 miles of mass transit east, northeast, northwest. We have one line. It's time we joined his city state and we ought to do it now. And there is a cautionary tale for all of us from the year 1284. Folklore in Germany talked about the Pied Piper of Hamelin. There was a mysterious stranger in partly colored clothes who appeared and offered to rid the town of a problem that they had. They were infested. The town fathers agreed to pay the Pied Piper to do their job for them. He did. Then they didn't pay him. And the Pied Piper continued to play and took every child from that village. There's a lesson to be learned here because the Pied Piper plays on in Northwest Indiana. He has taken our children. We have 9.2% less people living in Lake County, Indiana today than we did in 1970. The United States of America has grown by 52%. You have to work hard every day to decrease your population by 9% when everybody else is growing by 52. The Pied Piper has taken our children away from us. He has taken our wealth away from us. The median income of a person living in Lake County today is 12.9% less than it was in 1970. And the Pied Piper has taken the years of our life away from us. Because if you were alive in 1970, the odds are you were 43% younger than the average person living in Lake County today. And the piper plays on that, listen, I don't ride the South Shore. I don't think anybody in this room probably rode the South Shore today. But every one of us can benefit because of that transit-oriented development. And I talk about our children. Young people today simply are not driving as much, and we have to recognize that preference. Young people today are more likely to want to live in urban areas and are more open to non-driving forms of transportation. Those between 16 and 34 years of age drove 23% fewer miles in 2009 and in 2001. The Pied Piper plays on that let Illinois build it. And Chicago knows the value of commuter rail as its planning documents call for 75% of their residential homes to be within walking distance of public transit in 2040. Some have listened to the Pied Piper play the tune that, you know what? 
they're going to move south from the cities. I'm going to be very blunt today. They've moved. And if we do the financing correctly, and you have transit-oriented development in areas like Etna and Miller, people are going to die to live late near Lake Michigan. You look at the connection of that north, south, east, west line in downtown Hammond. Ask Mayor McDermott about it. He testified about a week ago on that. And you think about the development possibilities. But the Pied Piper plays on. One tune that has been played for me is, well, if you expand the South Shore to Dyer, doesn't do nothing for East Lake County. Well, first of all, I would ask people to get out the map because when that South Shore someday goes to Valparaiso, it's going to go through eastern side of Gary and Hobart, Indiana. And additionally, from my humble perspective, living here in Turkey Creek, if somebody, God forbid, is working in Munster and making a living and paying taxes in Lake County, I'm better off. I'm better off. And the Pie Piper plays on that, well, you know, jobs are leaving the loop and they're going to the northwest side. I think the mayor might dispute that heartily, but I think there's jobs being created on the northwest side of Chicago. Well, there's 410 miles of mass transit line. That's why those jobs are being created. But let's not beat around the bush today. The problem is how you're going to pay for it. In 2011, it was estimated that the expansion would cost about $464.4 million. That is a lot of money, even in Washington, D.C. But I would remind you, half of that would come from the federal government. And while there's no guarantee in life, I wouldn't be up here today if I didn't believe we met every last criteria. And where are you going to invest a dollar today? of your tax dollar and immediately before any development takes place, get a dollar back. We got a lot of bankers here. Ask them if they've got a better idea. And if you don't want to pay a tax for transit, don't you ever put another gallon of gas in your car. Just stop filling your car up because every time you buy a gallon of gas, you are paying for development of mass transit somewhere else in the United States, but not in Northwest Indiana. And despite the travail in Washington, D.C., we have been spending about $11 billion a year on transit development, and we're going to continue to do that. Mayor Mir from Michigan City is here, and I would agree what he said on July 5th about the South Shore. He said, there has been plenty of vision we're filled up on vision. Time to take action. So we ought to use today, all of us, our state officials, our local officials, our business community, labor leaders, not-for-profits, individuals, to commit that by March 31st, 2014, we are going to solve the problem of financing the South Shore and the bus system, and we're going to go and build it. I think the mayor wants to speak and dinner's getting cold and so I will summarize. <laughs> I mentioned the Pied Piper of Hamlin and it is a cautionary tale from almost 800 years ago. And think about the analogies to Northwest Indiana and Lake County. Hamlin had a problem, but the leaders of Hamlin did nothing about it. They waited for somebody else to solve their problem for them. Then they didn't want to pay for the solution. And all their children left, just like ours have. Going forward, there may be some people who still want to do nothing. And this is America, and if you want to do nothing, go ahead. But I would suggest to you, don't stand on the right of way and do nothing. Because we are going to resolve the financing issue by March 31st, 2014, and we are going to build a train and a bus system and bring our children home. Thank you very much.